welcome to this week's episode of Look at All This Crap. Wow, that's quite the bag of hardware. Um, so I ended up just uh, biting the bullet, bending over, grabbing my ankles, took her no lube, and ordered up some detachable saddlebags. So that's what we're going to be doing today. This is, you know, I'm going through the instructions and stuff, and this, uh, this is a little bit of a process. Now, this install is going to apply for if you want to use a detachable sissy bar. Um, so, I would imagine that the instructions will be pretty similar. If you didn't want to use a detachable sissy bar, all you're going to end up doing is uh, not reusing your factory, or not factory, but your docking points for that. Everything else should be pretty similar. And this is for a fat bob, which, flipping through the instructions real quick, it looks like I just use like one additional spacer compared to the other models. Step one is remove your seat. Now to remove my seat, which is a Mustang seat with the uh, Mustang screw, it's just a 530 seconds Allen head socket. Now it's pretty good practice so that you don't lose this, just to thread this back in by hand so that it's sitting there waiting for you. The next step is to remove the main fuse. I don't want to, so I'm not going to. How about that? And for the next step, we have already hit a problem. Interesting how that goes, right? It says, uh, you know, remove shock absorber and install the lower bracket kit that come, you know, with the instructions that come with it. It didn't come with those instructions for these lower bracket kits. So uh, I'm going to just give this to you right off the bat so that if this is all you're looking for, you don't have to watch the rest of the video. You got to go online and you got to find the instructions and print them off. Now I found them here. And uh, what it looks like you're looking for is kit numbers 90637-06B or 06C. And uh, I'll put that in the description and whatnot so that you can just save some time and find it. You gotta print out these instructions for the lower support bracket because um, maybe my kit's a one-off, but it didn't come with it. And that's a little bit frustrating. Now, once you get those instructions and stuff like that, um, I'm actually going to skip that lower mounting bracket step and I'm going to do the fender stuff first. Now, the reason that I do that is because if you read through the lower bracket instructions, they say to be like immediately ready to install the bags onto it so that you you know the Loctite doesn't set up on you. Now, if I go and install this bracket and then I spend 25 minutes doing these kinds of things, now that Loctite's going to be set up, so those instructions are wrong there. Grab your 730 seconds Allen head socket and go ahead and remove both of these screws. Don't throw these out or lose them or anything like that. Just set them aside for right now because you're going to reuse those docking points. Now I just discovered something else that's wrong with this kit. It says that um, you can either use the new fender brackets supplied or reuse your old ones. Now the problem is, is my old ones go the whole distance inside the fender there. So uh, I'm gonna have to reuse mine because obviously the ones that came in the kit help support the light as well. So for the uh, next part, you have your fender screws and your new docking points. So you take your fender screw, you throw one of the new docking points on it, and then you're going to take your original front docking point and slide it over as well. So off your original front docking point, it had that cone at the top. Now, the instructions don't say, like the original kit had this washer on it, but the instructions don't say whether or not I should reuse the washer. So I'm going to, since the you know the original docking point needed the washer at the fender so i guess we'll see what happens here um, now add some blue loctite to your threads and go ahead and install that front one so i'm not going to torque this down just quite yet i'm just going to snug it up and touch it just like that and then i'm going to go on to the rear one i'll torque them both at the same time for the rear screw Again, grab one of these screws, throw one of the new uh, docking points on there with one of the washers that came with it. So then take your original docking point, slide that on, and then the washer from that docking point, slide that on, put a thread lock on there, and thread it in. 
So you're gonna tighten that up. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna touch this one down and then I'm gonna grab the torque wrench and I'm gonna torque them down. Okay, so the uh, torque spec is 21 to 27 foot pounds. So I'm gonna start at 21 and just get them, you know, properly seated where they need to be. Okay, I was able to do it one handed there. Right on. And then uh, what I'm gonna do from there is then I'm gonna just bump it up to like 24 so that it's right in the middle of that range. So bump that up to 24, go back to the front one, torque it. Sometimes I like to just double check that it's fully torqued. And then again on the back one. All right, so now that we have the docking points all set up and everything, now we proceed with removing the shock. If you just do one side at a time, you don't gotta worry about your swing arm dropping too much and having to screw around with it. Uh, I think you need to have it on a jack though. Um, I mean, you can try it without a jack, but uh, I don't know, I could just see it sagging a little bit. And then you might need a buddy to help lift up on your fender. So for mine, it's a T50 on the bottom. Go ahead and take that out. Put a rag on your exhaust so that you don't scratch your exhaust. And then this upper nut is a 19 mil. Set this stuff off to the side. Um, I'd recommend putting it on like some cardboard or something, which uh, look at that. They conveniently give you a nice box to pile your shocks on so you don't scratch them. Next up, they want you to remove this stud. Now, if you use the closed end of a wrench, a 19 mil, you can get on there. This is gonna be a little bit of a lengthy process, just kind of turning this out a quarter turn at a time. Yeah, it sucks, but it's what you got to do unless you want to take your fender out and get a socket on that. All right, there you have it. So now that that's out, we'll just set it over with the other stuff and move on. Okay, so I'm struggling a little bit with the instructions here, but uh, we're kind of figuring it out as we go, just like you would at home. Take your upper shock mount and then uh, grab one of the new docking points. And then uh, out of this kit that has these brackets in it, you want this screw. And then this is what you're going to attach to here. Okay, and so once you get that kind of just snug down, take your torque wrench, go to 24 foot-pounds. And uh, if you use two hands, you'll be able to just hold it and torque it. So I'm going to have to put the camera down for that one. All right, so for my bike, these long bolts are what I'm going to end up needing and then you put one of the thin washers on it and then the shock's gonna go over that and then it's gonna go through the bracket up to the bike. All right, so here's how it's gonna look before you slide it on. You got your bolt, washer, shock, the new mount part, and then you'll slide that through. Use the thickest washer and then one of the new hex nuts on the other side. Okay, now you take two 19 mils, again, closed box end on this side. You can actually put a socket on this side so it makes life easy. Just snug it a touch so that this bracket will stay in place, but you can still move it by hand. For the lower shock bolt, they supply you with a new bolt, and then you use that other thick washer. Let me uh, let me grab these two here side by side. This this one up upper one is the the thicker washer that goes behind this jam nut. The thinner washer, but still thicker than the other ones. That's what she said. Is the one that goes between the shock and the fork. The new one is a five sixteenths Allen head. So we're gonna go ahead and just tighten that right up. The torque for that lower shock bolt is 35 to 45 foot-pounds, so I'm going to go 41, but I'm going to use two hands so that I can support the uh, other side of the torque wrench there, but make sure you torque that. For the actual bag bracket, this is where it gets really confusing. If you look at the picture here, shows the spacers that you got to use with the FXDF, the different length bolts, blah, blah, blah. That's pretty straightforward. But do the spacers go on the outside of the bag or on the inside of the bag? That's what's kind of tripping me up here. I would imagine they go on the outside of the bag to actually space out the bag. For the FXDX model, or DF, sorry, you have to use basically all three. You got to use the two plastic and then the one isolator. And this will definitely be a two-handed job. <laughs> 
okay wow yeah that was uh that was a little bit more difficult than i feel it should have been um <laughs> i don't know having a friend to help you out you know because like reaching around the bag and stuff kind of sucked but uh okay so don't tighten those down just yet you just want to um like basically snug them up so you can still move that bracket around as needed. So now you want to pull out on this knob and turn it to the unlocked position and then you're going to roughly install it onto the bike. Okay, so a little fang dangling, you get her on there, you make sure it's slided all the way forward, come inside the bags, make sure that's locked. Okay, so now that the latch is locked up, you know, everything's where it needs to be. So uh, what we're gonna do from here is I'm gonna take it off, put it back on, make sure it goes on smoothly, and then I'm gonna tighten everything down. The torque for these inside screws is 60 to 90 inch pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do 75 inch pounds. So I find it hilarious when instructions do this. They're like, oh, and then tighten the upper shock bolt to specified torque in the book. Not everybody has a book, you know. Just so you know, it is 30 to 40 foot-pounds. Actually, hold on a second. It, do I torque it to the upper stud like it used to be back before I replaced it for the bolt? Or do I torque it to the original shock bolt torque? <sighs> okay, well, um, just thinking about it, that entire bolt is about the same size as that previous stud. So I'm going to torque it to 75 foot-pounds. All right, now that I did that torque, that actually felt pretty good. So um, I would definitely advise torquing it to the 75 foot-pounds. Now that you've already done one side, the other side's gonna go extremely quick. So you grab your 732nds Allen head, remove these two. The rear one, you use the new bolt, the new dock, washer, original spacer, original washer. For the uh, front one, new bolt, new hardware or dock, original dock, and washer. Put thread lock on it. Touch them both down, just a little bit of snugness, and then we're gonna torque them. So we'll start at uh, 21 foot-pounds, and then we're gonna bump it up to 24 foot pounds. I like to just bounce back and forth between the two after I uh, get it torqued to 24 just to make sure that it is 100% there and perfect. So now our docking hardware is on. Now we remove the shock absorber, take your 19 mil, take off this nut. This time I'm going to take the top off first. Now the thing that's different about the left side when it comes to the lower bolt is you're gonna need a 19 mil to hold that jam nut. And then again, you'll need your T50 to get this part. Use two hands, just hold the wrench and then wind out that bottom bolt. The instructions specifically say to reuse the jam nut on the back side of this. I don't know why they can't uh, just do you a solid and um, give you a new nut. You know, it's like a 10 cent piece, probably not even. Just to avoid kicking it into the abyss, I'll bring it over to my fancy dancy cardboard part holder. Just like that other side, you're gonna go ahead and take this stud out with the closed end of your 19 millimeter wrench. So, remove this stud completely, bring it over here to your other pile of stuff. Come over to your upper bracket, you take this uh, Allen head bolt with the Loctite already on it, pop it in the new docking hardware, and then secure it down to the bracket. Go ahead and torque that to the bracket with uh, your, what was it, 732nds Allen head, and you're torquing it to 24 foot-pounds. Come over to your bolt pile, Grab the longest one, the thin washer, then it goes shock, bracket, and then through the uh, frame. Bolt, washer, shock, bracket, thick washer, and new nut. Then like the other side again, uh, just snug it up a little bit so that this bracket moves with ease. So come over back over here, grab that original jam nut of yours, and then, uh, it's gonna go bolt, 
that middle sized washer and then the jam nut on the other side. So now you're going to need a, I think it was 5 16 Allen socket, your torque wrench, and then uh, you're going to need your 19 mil to hold the other side and it's 30 to 45 foot pounds. All right, I'm going to save you some time right here and a little bit of a headache. You will not be able to get the closed end back off. So you're going to have to use the open end and hold it while you torque that. Otherwise your wrench will get stuck and you'll have to back the bolt back off. All right, so again, you're going to want to get your stuff all stacked up there. And then you want to take the longer bolt, the lock washer and the flat washer. And then we are going to attach those brackets. I don't know where I put it at the moment. I'll have to find it. The bracket to the saddlebag. All right, so you got the uh, bolt, lock washer, and washer going through into the bracket on the back side here. Just remember it goes uh, plastic, rubber, plastic for the spacers. And I mean, here's a little bit of a better look of how that bracket goes. I gave those screws just a couple more turns so that the threads are in there all nice. And now you're ready to set this on the bike. Get that front bracket hooked onto the docking hardware. And then, uh, oh, see right there, I screwed up. Ha. Okay, that's fixed now. So then you come in here, lock it up. Perfect, you know it's installed properly now. So what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm just gonna kinda snug everything a little bit, take it off, put it back on, and then we'll torque it. All right, so you get your closed box stand on there. Grab your 19 mil, set your torque wrench to 75, and torque this upper bolt. Now we get in on these ones, and it's 60 to 90 inch pounds, so I'm going 75 inch pounds. Double check that you haven't left any tools up there. Remove this, and go ahead and slide your seat back in. Now, I always thread lock this before I put it in. The torque on this rear bolt is 20 to 40 inch pounds which really doesn't take much <laughs> all right so now you can clip your sissy bar in and i guess that hardware is not sticking out too terribly far with the sissy bar on okay and there you have it saddlebags with sissy bar uh it doesn't look great you know i'm definitely not really a big fan of the look but uh you know, I, well, you know, I needed it. I need these bags to get a little bit more functionality out of this. So at least they're removable. What more could you really ask for there? Um, yeah, they're pretty stiff, sturdy. Um, I definitely uh, have no complaints about the build. The instructions, on the other hand, yeah, that sucks. You know what, uh, if you remember in that other video of mine, I was talking about um, not, not wondering or being curious how the brackets would look and everything without it on. I guess that's not too terrible. I mean, the nice trade-off is, is that it blacks this part out, but then you've got this hanging out. Um, as for the actual docking hardware, yeah, you know, it's still behind the signal light and everything, so it's, it's definitely manageable. Um, I guess it's just a sacrifice you got to make, right? If you want to get something more functional on your bike. The tools needed for this job, now this is definitely going to be specific to my bike, I'd have to say, is uh, blue Loctite, red Loctite, a 3 8 torque wrench. Uh, now this one does from like 50 inch pounds all the way up to 100 foot pounds. So for the seat, I had to use a different torque wrench. A deep 3 8 19 mil, or you can use a you know a shallow 19 millimeter wrench, 3 8 ratchet, preferably with a wobble head, a T50 Torx, a T40 Torx, a 5 16 Allen head, 7 30 seconds Allen head, 5 30 seconds Allen head, a couple of assorted. Um, extensions and then in the event that you struggle using just this short little ratchet to break free those upper shock studs use a 
half inch 19 millimeter with a breaker bar because sometimes if you get just reefing on something that's when you're going to slam your fist into something and bust your knuckles open i feel i should probably mention this since it is a legal thing you're supposed to install these reflectors and um, they want you to like poke holes right here there's not a chance I'm doing that. I mean, I don't black out my bike just to put two reflectors on the side of my saddlebags. So, uh, you know, in usual tradition of doing what I want and not always abiding by the rules, there's no reflectors going on there. So, just to talk a little bit about that experience, um, you know, the actual install isn't too terribly difficult. It just seems to be more of a hassle to... Uh, cipher through those um, instructions and print out those instructions that it didn't even come with like the rest of the job is actually super basic super easy yeah a little bit finicky here and there but uh, you know nothing you can't figure out as you go um, you know what uh, I think in the description I'll probably link up some stuff like maybe not links because it, YouTube's pretty uptight about that but I'll just put you know like where you know the tool list is in the video and where the left side is right side is because yeah, people always search for different things and stuff like that and I, I hope this saves someone time and potentially money because if you opened up those instructions and saw all those bolts and stuff like that that could definitely be something that's intimidating so I mean paying somebody an hour to install this is it's not needed if you have the basic tools that are needed if you uh you know if you enjoyed this one make sure you hit that subscribe button i've got quite a few uh other how-to videos and i've got some good trip videos um, let me know what you think of the bags are they incredibly awful looking or uh, did i make the right sacrifice there to uh, get a little bit of functionality out of that